begin module 9 on membrane proteins and membrane transport. In the first two lectures, we will be talking about membrane proteins, their characteristics, and what types of proteins are there in membranes. In the following two lectures, we will be looking at membrane transport and the specific functionalities and the specific energy associated with transport in the diffusion across the membranes. This will be followed by a lecture on electron transport. When we look at the specific concept of membranes, the first thing that comes to mind is the lipid bilayer. And what we will be looking at is the specific lipid type distribution in the bilayer because that is going to decide upon what kind of proteins will interact with these lipids in the membranes. So we will also be looking at the lipid distribution in the membranes and the types of membrane proteins. In this, we have the specific types of lipids that form the lipid bilayer, which is an ex extremely important constituent of our cell, our cell membrane, where we have our polar head group and the hydrophobic tail. What is the nature of the head group? And what is the nature of this hydrophobic tail that will form our cell membrane? And based on that, what kind of proteins do we have associated with the membrane? If we look at the plasma membrane, we have this as our plasma membrane marked here. We have in the cell, the cytoplasm, the nucleus, and the other cellular organelles. The specific structure of the plasma membrane involves a lot of variations in terms of the types of molecules that are present. So the interior of the cell is physically separated from the external environment by this permeable membrane, the plasma membrane. And in the plasma membrane, there are several components that are present. The functions of the plasma membrane are to protect the cell interior from the environment, to selectively export and import molecules, ions, gases, to activate the cell in terms of its functionality, to bring about biological processes. It also regulates the fluidity of the overall membrane to allow for this transport. And the intracellular membrane provides additional functions in eukaryotic cells. And we have the specific types of lipid membranes. Now, when we consider glycerophospholipids, we understand that these are all derived from glycerol. If we look at the structure of glycerol, which is CH2OH, 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 two of these in the case of these specific general structures of the phospholipids or the glycerophospholipids, we have two of these OH interacting or forming two fatty acid chains. These two fatty acid chains are those that form the non-polar tails as we see that they are composed mainly of hydrophobic residues or hydrophobic backbone, CH2, CH2 backbone. The ester bond that is linked here and linked here is what connects this glycerol with the fatty acids in the formation of an ester group. Here we have a phosphate group, which is why these are called glycerophospholipids. And there is the presence of an alcohol group here. This alcohol group is the polar head group that forms the polar head of our lipid. So if we look at the membrane lipids, lipids in our glycerophospholipids, where it was derived from glycerol, we looked at the specific, so this is our polar head, and we have the two tails. This polar head group is comprised of these types of specific polarities that give them their specific property in the class of glycerol 
phospholipids. When we look at the glycerophospholipids with their head group according to the alcohol that they have been derived from, they have specific names, phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, <clears throat> phosphatidylserine, phos inositol bisphosphate, glycerol, and diphosphatidylglycerol. So these different types of head groups give them different properties, which is important. The different tails give them properties that are important. So if we look at the sphingolipids, here in this case, what happens is we have one that is an acyl chain, the other that is a sphingosin, all based on the fact that we have a polar head group and two hydrophobic tails brought about by the chain of CH2 uh, moieties that are present here. And this again is our alcohol group where we can have a phosphocholine and this is an example of sphingomyelin in a specific type of lipid. So all of these form the parts of the lipids. We can look at the sterols that are present also in membranes, which is part of say cholesterol that is part of the lipid membrane, the plasma membrane. Now, the possibility, therefore, of the plasma membrane to have different types of head groups, different types of tails, results in different types of properties of this. So, we can also have another type, with, which are the ether-linked lipids. Again, what we notice here is a polar head group with two hydrophobic tails. So the variability in the distribution of the membrane lipids comes from the fact that it is based on the type of fluidity of the membrane where we have major eukaryotic phospholipids. These are phosphatidylcholine mostly, mainly. Major bacterial phospholipids are a bit different in that they could be phosphatidylethanolamine or phosphatidylglycerol. Then we have the other types. And the mitochondrial inner membrane has this specific type of lipid. Similarly, if we look at the other types, we can have the cholesterol, which is almost entirely in the plasma membrane. Then we have the specific microdomains that act as signal transduction regions because we understood that this has a very important role in signal transduction. Then we have the exoplasmic type that are the choline lipid types and we have the cytoplasmic types that are the amino lipid types. So when we look at a specific idea of the different types of or the variability in the distribution of these membrane lipids at the different positions of the membrane, then we will see that these lipid properties affect the membrane in different ways. For example, the head group size compared to the length of the chain is going to give a variation to the structure or what is called the curvature of this specific part. So if we have a smaller head group with a longer chain, the curvature will be different. So based on the head group size and the length of the lipid chain, it is possible to get a different types of curvatures associated with what are called the leaflets of the membrane. So what are these leaflets? This is the lipid bilayer structure, a general structure that says that there is water on either side of this lipid bilayer. We have leaflet one and leaflet two and there are specific associations in the sense that we have a polar component because of the polar head group that interacts with the water and we have a hydrophobic part, a non-polar part associated with the hydrophobic tails. Given the size of the specific head groups and the length of the chain, we understand that there can be a relative curvature to this that would result it in forming the plasma membrane. So if we look at this biological membrane, we understand that there are variations in the lipid structure 
in terms of its head group and its tail, which then results in a specific curvature associated with the membrane. This membrane, lipid bilayer, therefore can have variations depending upon the components that they are comprised of and the components that are present. This is called a fluid mosaic model because of the different components present on the membrane. We have the cytoskeleton. We have different proteins on the membrane. These proteins have specific roles to play. We have carbohydrates that are attached to the proteins where we be looking at this in the protein carbohydrate interactions that we will study in the following module. We look at the cholesterol and we have the functions of the membrane bound proteins. This is involved in the transport of solutes, in the communication and signal transduction, cell cell and cell ectocell extracellular matrix recognition, energy production and photosynthesis, defects, and cellular trafficking. So the whole important activities associated with membrane brown proteins are very evident from the fact that all the cellular activities in the cytoplasmic region and the transport of material from the inner cytoplasmic region to the extracellular region are all controlled by the proteins that are present in the membrane. If we look at the types of proteins in the membrane, there are two types. One is the integral protein that traverses the membrane. The other is a peripheral protein that is on the surface connected with the lipid. So it has a protein-lipid interaction and this is traversing the membrane in the sense where the protein-lipid interactions are on the surface of this specific protein. We will look at, at this and the types of residues that are involved in the interactions between the lipid as we go through the lectures. The types of proteins in membranes are the integral or the intrinsic membrane proteins. They are presence, have presence of one or more segments and they traverse the lipid bilayer. We look at the peripheral type. These are the extrinsic membrane proteins. They interact with the membrane directly. Indirectly, in the sense that they have the specific structural. So these are the structures that we have for the lipid bilayer, and we would have a protein integrated there, where we would have the interaction with the membrane in a, in a different fashion. When we look at the types of proteins in the membrane, we have this that is located in the phospholipid bilayer. The transmembrane protein is composed of hydrophobic amino acids which interact with the fatty acyl groups of the membrane phospholipid. This means that when we have our lipid bilayer, which is so we have the polar head group and we have our lipid bilayer. If we have to have a protein that is a transmembrane protein, that traverses the membrane length then or the membrane thickness, then the residues on the surface at this point or at this point would have to have hydrophobic amino acid residues because the tails are hydrophobic in nature. We have the lipid anchor proteins where they are anchored with the membrane leaflets by covalently bound fatty acids. These are specific examples of these types of integral proteins. We will look at them in a bit more detail. The peripheral extrinsic membrane proteins, they interact with the membrane indirectly by interaction with the integral, integral protein or directly by interaction with the polar head group. So we have either a protein attached or we have them directly interact with the polar head group of the lipid. They are usually located in the cytosolic phase of the membrane and there are specific examples such as cytochrome C and cuprodoxin. Their structural aspects 
or their structural components are different than those of the integral proteins. We will look at an example of a peripheral type of protein initially and then look at the integral ones. So, cuprodoxin is a copper protein that participates in electron transfer between proteins and we see that its structural aspects allow it to interact with the surface of the membrane that is the polar head groups. Similarly, in the cytochrome C, which is a heme protein, the function is cell respiration. This is located in the inner mitochondrial membrane that also has a structure that is distinctly different from the integral membrane protein structures, which we will look at. The functions of the integral proteins thus are as cell re receptors because they, can, they traverse the cell membrane. They can act as cell receptors. They, trans, they can transport molecules through the web membrane, which is the most important uh, function that they have. And they can form channels to import and export molecules, which is their main purpose of membrane transport, which we will look at distinctly different from our way in which they act in the sense that there are specific components, there is a specific membrane potential that is important for the channel formation and the transport of material from the inside to the outside of the cell and from the outside to the inside of the cell. And we, we will be looking that in detail in our discussions on membrane transport. The integral proteins have two general architectures. One is an alpha helical bundle type, as it is called, or a beta barrel. We realize that this is necessary because there has to be a pore whereby the material or the material that has to be transported through, whether it's small molecules or ions or even larger molecules, the way they would have to be transported is through the membrane. Another type of structure which we have not looked at before is called a beta helix. This is kind of a solenoid protein domain and these are the strands that are in this fashion here. So we have the structure that is stabilized by interstrand hydrogen bonds. So these are the hydrogen bonds that stabilize this structure and can, it also can be stabilized by other protein-protein interactions or metal ions. And what they do is they associate with each other very effectively and they can form a pore by which we can have transport. There are bitopic proteins that are integral proteins. They contain a single membrane spanning domain. So this is what it is. So if this is our membrane, we would have the N terminal on one side and the C terminal on one side. And when we have a single membrane spanning domain, this is called a bitopic domain. They can function as recognition or adhesion molecules, as receptors of growth factor like messengers. And the cytoplasmic region passes on the signal into the cell by binding the soluble elements or cytoskeletal proteins. So what happens is during this transfer, if we have the transfer in this direction, to the cytoplasmic region, then the signal is passed on through other molecules to the specific location or the target where the signal has to go. There are polytopic integral proteins which have their variations in a way that we have the, this is where they traverse the membrane a number of times. So they contain two or more membrane embedded regions. And they usually function as receptors or transporters. And the functionality we see is dependent upon the structure of the protein. If we look at the integral membrane proteins, which have over 90% alpha helical structure, this is an example where we have the adrenergic receptor that acts as an integral membrane protein. Other examples include the bitopic, that's the recognition of and or of addition molecules, where we have a specific type of tra traversing of the membrane and a specific recognition site that recognizes a molecule or for addition 
cell cell adhesion also that would result in the transport of material in the polytopic receptors or transporters we can have an example like the k plus channel that involves the transport of ions we will be seeing the membrane transport in greater detail in the subsequent lectures when we look now at a uh, transfer of the membrane we have our exoplasm we have our cytoplasm and we an integral protein that is a specific receptor protein this receptor protein can be an extracellular signaling molecule binds to the receptor protein on the cell surface so this binding occurs and when this binding occurs this initiates an intracellular signaling cascade these receptor proteins are very important in their st structure function relationships so that the specific binding is going to trigger this signaling cascade so then there is an intracellular response once the binding occurs an example of this of an ionophoric antibiotic is gramicidin this gramicidin is an example also of a beta helix like protein and we have the exoplasm and the periplasm and the transport of material across the cell across the membrane this is extremely important as we understand for the functioning of the cell for the transport of material to maintain the cell the cell surface receptor therefore can act as an ion channel linked receptor where after ligand binding the ion channel is opened and it allows selective ions to transport through the membrane so this membrane potential which we will look at is important in allowing the the binding of the receptor that is going to open the channel that is going to then allow the ion to be transported so we have another example a g protein coupled receptor again after ligand binding the guanine nucleotide binding protein the g protein is activated this g protein activation once it is activated interacts with the ion channel or an enzyme another type is where we have an enzyme linked receptor where the self surface receptor has an enzyme linked intracellular domain after ligand binding the signal is transferred across the membrane and this activates the enzyme into performing its function an example is tyrosine kinase receptor where there would be a phosphate transfer involved the beta sheets that we saw would the B, we saw the beta helices this is a beta sheet where this is the formation of a large pore depending on its a porin type molecule that is important into the size of the molecule that it is transferring and we will see what we mean by active and passive diffusion in our lectures on membrane transport so we looked at the biological membrane we understood the components of the lipid bilayer the cytoskeleton the specific proteins involved the integral type proteins and the peripheral type proteins and why they would adopt the specific structural components that they are comprised of we have the carbohydrate attached we will look as i mentioned the protein carbohydrate interactions and we have the cholesterol that due to its presence maintains a fluidity we learned that the lipid head group size and the length of the chain and the this will adopt a different structure a different curvature depending on the head group size and the length of the chain and for the integral proteins there are specific type of structural aspects that we're looking at whether they are forming an alpha helix bundle or a beta sheet type beta barrel structure that would be a porin or they can form a beta helix that looks like has a solenoid type structure that is going to be helpful here in the understanding so what we looked at is the glycerophospholipids the sphingolipids the sterols the ether linked lipids integral and peripheral membrane proteins these are the references thank you